This is True Rewind. This is True Rewind. Rewind. This is True Rewind. This is True Rewind. Rewind. This is True Rewind. This is True Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your True Hill Phenom, SP3. Get into DeLorean, pump up the flux capacitor for episode 33 of True Rewind. This is where me and the Monday Night Warriors, we go back in time to the Monday Night Wars uh, and review WCW Nitro and WWF Raw and let you know what was the better show for the week. This is episode 33, so no, it is not the Larry bird episode it's the kareem aldu jabbar yes lakers all day 17 champions <laughs> and we are back with the condesir of all reporting mr romeo anthony cologne what is up gentlemen uh for this episode i will not be driving a, a delorean i think we should take the train and i'm gonna take this train off the rails <laughs> I, I already know where you're going with that, and you're lighting up some nitro. Um, but we are joined with the your backseat driver himself, the Supreme Ivan Ooze. This is Drunk Guy JJ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's always good to be here, you know, even though things get derailed, train tracks, shit going off the rails, you know. It's, it's so, nonetheless... Good here, good here, be here with my good brothers. Can't even Absolutely. fucking talk. <laughs> absolutely like this video if you're watching this right now share this with all your wrestling fans and friends even if they're not a wrestling fan everyone likes a little bit of nostalgia so come back on the ride with us through 1996 we are reviewing the february 5th 1996 episodes of wcw nitro and wwf raw so place your comments down below tell us what you thought about each episode and our review and of course there's the i card down at the bottom you can push that to subscribe and the bell below that to press oh all. my fucking god <laughs> yo hold on bro i'm so sorry man what the fuck <laughs> guys so you can continue though what were you saying uh to press all for all notifications to stay to keep up to date with all the great content right here on true hill heat so yes, Romeo, you are our pilot. You are the the driver of this train. Try your best to keep it on the rails and take it away. Nitro, we'll start with that. February 5th, oh 1996. Live from, I don't fucking know. They never say, so I have to look it up. Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> Lakeland, Florida. Uh, I, I, I've been in Lakeland um, for a Ring of Honor event in 2017. Cool place. I was only there for the event, so I didn't, get to look or, I didn't get to look around, but cool place. This is the go-home show for Super Bowl Six, And Mongo and Pepe report, Sid. Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know what he has this poor, poor dog dressed as. I, I put a handmaiden. He has on a on a red wig, um, a little red riding hood. I don't know. Um, Jesus just, I was just done, but he says, let me tell you, a player must have thought that I was, has offended me and tried to play it out. I don't know if Hogan is going to be ready for that cage match tonight. It's on Sunday, Mongo. It's on Sunday. <laughs> but how fascinating is this opening match? Chris Benoit versus the WCW champion, Macho Man Randy Savage. Dark Two dead guys. Special. Yes. And uh, Randy, but WCW Heavyweight Championship, according to the commentators, even though the <laughs> ring announcer never <laughs> announced it as that. Randy Savage, uh, himself with two dead women, Miss Elizabeth and woman. Jesus, very love, very love match going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you guys just love to be controversy, controversial. That's part of the news. They, they passed. The you could have said passed away, not Murder, with us anymore. Overdosed, oh my murdered, god, overdosed, that's overrated. Heart attack, car crash. You know that's 
Dark Side of Ring, <laughs> Dark Side of Ring special match right now. Woman, Nancy Sullivan, uh, coming to the ring with Macho Man. On the other side of the ring, her future husband, Chris Benoit. And I thought murder. that was, oh, yeah, that too. <sighs> did Did you notice this, this funny spot in the match where um, Benoit tries to slingshot Macho Man into the bottom rope? And Macho says, no thanks, and just simply <laughs> stands up from the mood awkwardly. <laughs> Benoit then immediately takes him to the corner and chops the shit out of him. Chris Benoit goes for a tope suicida, and Randy dodges it. Benoit hits the ground with a loud Oh, thud. God, I was just More like, his head, <laughs> his head almost nailed the car rail, man. That was dangerous. Randy then with the big elbow drop on the top rope onto the back of Benoit's neck. Ric Flair out of nowhere. Comes arguing with Elizabeth on the outside. Uses her as a shield. Woman then attacks Randy from behind. Dirty finish at 8.37. Arn Anderson comes out of nowhere. Ric Flair, they're stomping Randy. Woman's laughing. Hulk Hogan to a big pop with a steel chair for the save for his best friend. Oh, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Uh, He just wants another title shot. Ric (laughs) Ric Flair hugs Woman as they walk away. She throws the four up. As Benoit reunites with them. Me Gene immediately wants a word with Hulk Hogan. Just a second, Mean Gene. Can't you see he's hurt? <laughs> that, that, that popped me. <laughs> Randy is taken to the back by officials. Hogan says he's got to take out the giant and Ric Flair. Immediately making it about him again. Ric Flair jumps him from behind, returning to the scene of the crime. Hey, Attack- Mean Gene tried. Me and Gene tried to lately. Like, like, he's like, he's like, hold up, hold up, hold, 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 hold up, hold up. He's like, no, 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 no. Let me talk. Blah, 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 blah. And then Flay was just like, <laughs> they could not have made that sec- that whole scene any more fucking obvious. They cut the camera. They moved the camera. Hogan tells Liz to go to the other side. It's like, yo, Hogan had to take about that care of the blocking and everything. <laughs> Rick attacks Hogan's damaged eye. The giant comes down, stalking at ringside. He's got a steel chair. Huge shot to Hogan's back. Randy runs back, fully healed. Steals the chair from the giant. Randy yells to Mean Gene what he does to flare in the cage. Can't be set on TV. He then immediately <laughs> chastises Elizabeth for not warning Hogan about his blind side attack. She deserved it. She did. <laughs> Good point. She did. Mean Gene lied. Mean Gene was like, she tried. She tried. Try. No, she she tried. tried. She was, it was you quiet. tried. You tried to and say a goddamn word. He trying to clap some Liz cheeks. That's all it was. Out here defending her and shit. Captain Savo. Tragic. Mean Gene even says, honest to God. <laughs> 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 You're going to hell, Mean Gene. You're going to hell. Randy yells for help and paramedics. Get some help! <laughs> <laughs> Hogan bleeding again. Blood and guts. <laughs> What a long, long first segment and a lot going on. Too much going on. <laughs> <laughs> the WCW way. <laughs> Jesus. What the fuck was that? <laughs> this was a this was a, a sign of what was to come on this episode. <laughs> that was the longest hour of my life. Oh yeah. my lord. Taskmaster. Versus Arn Anderson and Flying Brian. Flying As, I think I think I think these guys. Saw Macho, Flair, Woman, Liz, Hogan, and Macho in the hallway. And they said, oh, you think your your segment was a clusterfuck? Hold my <laughs> beer. Uh, as Pillman is making his way to the ring, Bischoff casually mentions Pillman's walking on thin ice. <laughs> that was the theme of that whole, that whole segment kept talking about. Uh, Pillman's still got a job, and Pillman's still here, like. It'll be Pillman and Sullivan in a strap match at Super Bowl. I, I haven't seen enough strap matches this year uh, in 2020. <laughs> Pillman shoves a cameraman twice. Bischoff asks the guys in the truck, take the camera off of him if he does it again. Brian Pillman is very weird in this match with his movements and mannerisms. Well, can, 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 can Sid get credit for, for saying this for weeks? <laughs> I've been saying this shit for weeks. No one else, no one else is noticing. He was slowly deteriorating, going off the limb, off the edge, every single week, and then this was just the biggest example of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it seems like every time Arn tags him, 
he immediately tags Arn back in. <laughs> <laughs> and Arn is like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Knock it off, dude. <laughs> but my God, when Taskmaster gets into the ring with Pelman, this is when this shit completely went off to the point that Bischoff on commentary is just like, oh, okay, oh, I'm just, I'm there. Oh, 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 okay, this is getting real. <laughs> yeah, that, that was definitely a shoot. <laughs> that was yeah, no work, buddy. Pillman is like wrestling awfully whenever he gets in the in the ring. Sullivan takes it to him. Pillman knows Sullivan. Uh, looks like they're shoot wrestling. I think even uh, Sullivan goes after Pillman's eye, and mm-hmm. Arn, Arn, Arn Anderson's like, not the eye! Nah. <laughs> He's trying not to fix it, it up. Knock it off, Pillman! That's what I'm <laughs> Knock it off! <laughs> and I don't know what's going on. Arn literally like pulls Taskmaster all the way to the backstage <laughs> area, and like some random person <laughs> hits him with a broomstick. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's going on! Like what? Who? I was, I was, I was like, both of these, both of these teams are heels. <laughs> no clue who the baby face is. Yeah. What, what am I supposed to cheer for here? Oh, I was shit. like, I was like, Pillman's getting his ass. Every Pillman sells for humorous. Then Taskmaster comes in. He completely don't <laughs> sell everything. He just walks away. <laughs> Like he wasn't getting whipped with a belt and stomped out. He literally oh just God. rose out the ring. No, I didn't even. To, I didn't even get to that part yet. I didn't even get to the little whoopee where Taz has to come back with the strap and he starts whipping Pillman three whips and he completely just rolls out the ring and just is just he could he's pissed. He's clearly pissed. And like like Bischoff is not even being the commentator during this match. He's being producer and telling them don't don't put the camera on him. <laughs> Keep the camera off this nut. It's exactly it's exact words. Yeah, exact words. <laughs> Jesus Christ. By the way, they, they the referee rings for the bell just for Hart tossing the bell to Sullivan, not for him actually using it. it was good. Uh, another early bell. <laughs> Seven, 726. I have some notes here from the wrestling observer. Oh, my. Oh, boy. On Brian Pillman. A really strange thing happened with Brian Pillman that may finally lead to the end of him in WCW. Pillman and Sullivan stopped selling for each other and eventually tagged out. When he got back in, the match completely fell apart. Two shooting on each other. Oh, shocker. (laughs) (laughs) Not like we could have saw that. (laughs) Backstage afterward, Pillman and Sullivan reportedly had words with Pillman complaining that Sullivan wasn't selling for him. Pillman has been dangerously close to getting fired for weeks now for his erratic behavior. That's not the, even the crazy note, because listen to this. Oh, man. There was an incident at a hotel in Orlando where all the WCW wrestlers were staying when a man held a woman hostage in a hotel room and later threw her, threw her out and barricaded himself in. The SWAT team showed up and evacuated the entire hotel, including money, many of the wrestlers. They eventually tear gassed the guy out. What's notable about this incident is that, of course, Brian Pillman stayed in character outside the hotel the whole time. (laughs) Listen to this. Kept trying to get back in so he could apprehend the suspect himself. (laughs) He's like, just give me a gun. I got this. I got this. Foreshadow. Pillman's got a gun. Give me his nine millimeter. (laughs) After police got the guy and brought him out, Pillman kept trying to get close and was given the guy the four-finger horseman sing- signal as they put him Jesus in the police car. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Imagine just losing your mind going to jail. You got a fucking dewey about to just do it. You. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to jail now. You're going to jail now. <laughs> Yo, that's what my wrestling fans would do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Love Pillman. I love Crazy Pillman. Crazy Pillman is the best. Next up, Marcus Bagwell versus Ric Flair with woman. Paul Orndorff, Mr. Wonderful, casually walks behind Flair with a neck brace. Flair's puzzled. He goes to the announce desk, and he says on the mic, funny thing about payback, you never know when they're going to happen. Brain puts it all together, says he's the guy who hit Arn with the broom. Ah, I missed that part. I don't think that's enough payback for a broken neck, but hey. 
fucking whatever. Room. <laughs> <laughs> so so evidently he probably has a real broken neck and couldn't do it himself, so they just had to do it like that. Like, oh, I'm the one that did it. Because he wasn't the actual one who really did it. Bagwell gets a lot of babyface cheers here. I don't know if it's because the fans like him or if it's just because he's against Ric Flair. Like, there's a lot of teenage girls in the audience, so I could probably explain it. Yeah. American males! American males! American males! American males! American males! American males! Go fight my nose! Hopefully everyone is still watching. A valiant <laughs> effort <laughs> by Bagwell, but Flair gets the figure four on him for the submission in seven minutes. Rick keeps it on. And throat chops the ref for telling him to let it go. <laughs> the ref sounds like he was shot out of a cannon. He really did. <laughs> he was still laying on the like, ground oh, after everything was going on. <laughs> he's like, he's like, where am I? <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage returns after dropping Hulk Hogan off at a nearby hospital. <laughs> Chases Ric Flair off. Macho knocks over an official for trying to stop him. <laughs> Okay, they made yeah. that a big deal, too. Oh, my God, look what he's done. <laughs> yeah. Hamango's like, hold on, macho, hold on. Bro, there's no no respect for officials at WCW. No. That is, <laughs> this happens on a near weekly basis. <laughs> and it's Road Warriors, Hawk and Animal versus Lex Luger and Sting for the Tag Team Championship. Pretty sure Hawk using Water Rush to open their theme music might earn WCW a letter from Titans Legal Department, maybe. No. I don't know. No, no, they were they were doing that they were doing that like before they came before to WWF. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what might get them a letter from uh, Titan Towers was the fans chanting LOD, LOD. and then Bobby <laughs> the Brain saying, "Oh, they're chanting LOD for the Legion of Doom." <laughs> oh, you can't say that. <laughs> I thought the Road Warriors looked much better here than they did last week versus the Faces of Fear. Although well, that's not saying much. I must say it's not saying much. <laughs> 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 they put the bar way low for that. Hawk, no selling a pile driver from Lex Luger. Again. The screen goes crazy. I, I think it's, what is this, a paid advertisement from the NWO? No. <laughs> it's just technical difficulties. World. Bischoff says they momentarily lost power in the entire building. Apparently, Bischoff also blamed WWF for cutting the power, which is why you hear Mongo say, that means we're on top and they're just trying to catch up, baby. <laughs> I have a note here from The Observer. Eric Bischoff repeatedly blamed the event on sabotage by WWF. Vince McMahon was infuriated by the accusation and the assumption oh, yeah. that... Booking had nothing to do with it. Oh, no. <laughs> booking, booking had nothing to do with this terrible show. Got it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Sabotage. The, the assumption that WWF would attempt to do something illegal like sabotage the arena while they're on the air. The paranoia is getting real. Anyway, the real reason was due to construction nearby. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus construction Christ. Construction in Lakeland. Bischoff, you're ridiculous. First of all, who the fuck's doing construction that late at night anyway? <laughs> <laughs> also true. Also true. Good points. Jimmy Hart interferes with some kind of weapon. He drops it on the steps. Luger picks it up and hits Animal in the back with it. The ref counts the pin from the outside. Dirty finish, 735. Jesus. Luger celebrates like he won the World Series. Sting ain't happy. Me and Gene with the Road Warriors right after. Hulk demands a match with the winner of Harlem Heat and Sting and Luger. Animal says nobody can beat him fair and square. Hulk yells some more, and that's the end of the show. He said, he said, he said, I want, I want we want the, we, what was that? we want the winner of Harlem Heat and Luger and Luger and Sting and... <laughs> You saw oh, how he man. paused though when he said. <laughs> you saw how he paused though when he said no one can beat them. I'm like you just lost. Then he broke up. <laughs> Fair and square. <laughs> I was just like this promo is a microcosm of this entire show, <laughs> off the rails. Match of the night. I am gonna go. Benoit and Savage. Damn, kind of by default, even though that match was not that good. <laughs> just for the dive and the side. <laughs> Ah right, man, I, I'm not gonna put effort for that trash ass finish. And what what could it? What he, when Macho could have got the pin and then Flair came out. It's ridiculous. I'm going with Bagwell and Flair. It had a clean finish. <laughs> Bagwell looked good, and Flair got the win. And he was a heel afterwards. So that's the best match of the night. On that note, I'll give Ric Flair the MVP for the win for stealing women for making everyone look stupid. Had a good for- night. Sneak attacking Hulk Hogan. <laughs> that was great.
great. Rick Flair was about foreshadow into Super Bowl, man. Who's your MVP? <laughs> uh, Flair, absolutely. Flair had a good night. Had a good night in the beginning. Whoa. Stole a woman. Punched. A, <laughs> punched so good stole a woman. <laughs> he said stole a woman. woman. No. Stole. Sorry. Stole a woman. Sorry, you don't want you don't want a category. You know, put the, you know, be a little sexist. You know, sorry. That's a woman. Uh, you start no fucking seven thirty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the 730 words besides cocksucker. Uh, uh, your 730 words. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what? Yeah. The drunk guy JJ is 730. You got, you got to limit me to 7? Ain't this some shit? <laughs> I, I'm going to make it unanimous. You know, I hate giving a uh, person match of the night and MVP, but Flair is... The audacity. Yeah, Flair is just ridiculously had the best night of the night. LVP, I'm going to come a little bit out of the left field with this, but... I'm going to go with the Booker Man, Taskmaster Kevin Sullivan, for booking woman to join Ric Flair, get her a little bit closer to Chris Benoit. I mean, give it away, <laughs> the, the love of his life. Just uh, give it away to Taskmaster. Just give it to Pussy. <laughs> booked it away. Booked it away himself. <laughs> and, Pil- and Pillman would it sell for him. So <laughs> he, had, he had a bad night all around. He did not look like a booker. Um <laughs> Co LVP thin hair is falling out more and more. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Co LVP for uh, Kevin Sullivan, and once again, looking horrible as the world champion, the Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely Macho. Macho, oh god, these fucking curses, fucking world champion. Just, just don't put the belt back on us, man. Jesus, it's like they give him the belt, the belt. <laughs> no kind of development. He just looks like a fucking loser every um, almost every week. His champion is. I hate you. Hate to see it. He basically cheated to win the title, and now he's not looked good since. <laughs> he lost that clash of champions. Couldn't get the pinfall <laughs> victory here. He he aligned himself with women just to get turned on two weeks later. <laughs> oh God, we're not even at Super Brawl yet. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. I remember that note I said about Meltzer saying that woman would be the evil Elizabeth from Macho Man? Yep. Here she is with Rick <laughs> Meltzer, you fucked up, Meltzer. <laughs> we're going to put our thumbs out. We're going to count it down in three, two, oh, one. This is easy. Sorry. Thumbs up or thumbs down for Monday Nitro. Three, two, one. Look at this. I am going to go thumbs up. I was entertained by all this chaos. <laughs> For all the it. wrong reasons. <laughs> I loved it. Ryan Jesus Christ. TV. I'm yeah, yeah. You, I love yeah, I was, I was close to giving Pillman LVP, but I was like, no, he's, he's no. a candidate for MVP. <laughs> he's he's trying to get so give him both. He don't give a he, fuck. <laughs> he is so entertaining. I can't wait for Super Bowl. Oh and my it, God! It's, it's it's not only a strap match, ladies and gentlemen. It's a it's a respect match. Yeah, that the person has to say respect to the other person. Uh, Bischoff also noted that we're gonna see Sting and Luger versus Harlem Heat for the WCW tag team titles. We're gonna see the Nasty Boys versus Public Enemy uh, right. in a street fight, and we're gonna see Conan versus the One Man Gang for the U.S. title. So once again. Yeah. WCW is actually presenting us a card before a pay-per-view, which is something strange that they didn't do for the first couple of pay-per-views of this ride. 30 finishes, three. Wow. Rough bumps, two. Mongo meter for the 24th show. Awful. Blood and guts, one. All right. Let's switch the channel and see what's going over on USA Monday Night Raw. Taped once again from Stockton, California. Shocker. Yokozuna is starting off the show. He's in the ring with the British Bulldog. And let me tell you about the British Bulldog's week. Going to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Oh, good old Doug, Uncle Dave. <laughs> Snitching ain't easy. Davey, <laughs> <laughs> Davey Boy Smith wrapped up this week. Uh, and he has a case going on. Went to the jury. There's no verdict, but the big news out of the trial was that Smith was forced under oath to admit that wrestling is fake on the witness stand. The trial <laughs> the trial stems from a fight between Smith and someone at a nightclub who reportedly asked Smith's wife, Diana, to dance and may or may not have made a rude sexual comment to her. <laughs> God, that's a death wish. 
<laughs> For real. Have you seen Davy Boy? Sheesh. This is, and this is his roid rage phase, too? Jesus. Oh, my God. The victim says Smith beat him up <laughs> using <laughs> wrestling moves. <laughs> and so, so he had to admit that wrestling's fake. He's like, yeah, dude, I'm not a professional. <laughs> I'm an actor. The victim Shit, says, as you said. <laughs> The victim says Smith slammed his head to the ground, causing him permanent, serious brain damage. Other witnesses say Smith dragged the guy over to the bouncers and walked away. And then the guy tried to attack Smith, but slipped on the wet floor and hit his head and fell. (laughs) Smith had to testify (laughs) that you can't do most big wrestling moves in a real fight because they require (laughs) cooperation between both wrestlers. He's not doing no power slam. That's for damn sure. <laughs> a headlock will work. Then the two dudes with attitude make their entrance. Tons of fans with HBK gear. Ladies going wild. They rock, paper, scissors to see who starts. They too sweet each other. I always thought that was so dope Like when he did the rock, paper, scissors. I, I don't know, that was my thing. Apparently, these two have never lost together. Yeah, because they, they, they were WWF say, yeah. tag team champions and... Sean accidentally sweet chip music diesel, so they relinquished him. So they never lost, and even and that's why they, we had that bait and switch finish at uh, oh, in true. your house in September of '95 because Man, they didn't want so them to take ago. a L. <laughs> Kinda, right? Yeah, you forget that we've seen this match before. Sadly. Huge Davy Boy sucks chance it has no rhythm whatsoever. Davy Boy sucks. Davey boy sucks. <laughs> boy sucks. Why don't you say bulldog sucks? Much better rhythm. Much better rhythm. Come on, stop that. They don't want to talk about the dogs. That's probably why. <laughs> where, the dogs, where the dogs at? <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know a, a DMX picture would make its way into True Rewind right now. <laughs> 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 Who let the dogs out? <laughs> oh, <can't> relax. <laughs> then he starts, <laughs> he starts coughing on cue. <laughs> Bulldog loves these chants, though. He's, he bounces around. He even does a forward flip, landing on his feet. I've never seen a move like that. No, that's that's the dance moves he had on at that club before he got <laughs> <that guy> up. <laughs> <laughs> he was like... Yokozuna gets super kicked out of the ring by Sean. Bulldog and Owen Hart can't pick his fat ass up to get him back in the ring. <laughs> Shit. Sean and Diesel win by countout. Dirty finish, 10 minutes. Bulldog and Owen, you can see the look of disappointment in Yokozuna's weight. Cornette then yells at him for being so fucking fat. Oh, God. Oh Will God. you stop? <laughs> this is fat shaming? That's what it looked like. That's what it looked like to me. I was reading the lips. You sound like Jimmy so fat? You sound like Jimmy Hart. Sheesh. Fat shaming. Vince himself says Cornette is publicly Yo. humiliating him. Oh, my God, yes. For reading him. <laughs> Verbally raping. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, what the fuck, Vince? <laughs> Sheesh. This escalated quickly. <laughs> Yokozuna shoves the shit out of Cornette and starts punching him in the corner. Baby face turn. Is this our first baby face turn? That's one I can remember. No, no, no. Diesel's face again. <laughs> yeah, Diesel, Diesel has been on new <laughs> That's like under the rug This is like a real baby face turn That we okay. see for ourselves He, like, helped, he helped Sean man they turn face again. <laughs> Bulldog and Owen start punching Yoko's in his back as he snaps Letting out a big Samoan yell, Japanese yell Excuse me um, Chases them off The crowd Ch- here is big <laughs> Yoko <laughs> Yoko <laughs> Chases after them as fast as he can backstage. I literally wrote that. As fast as he can. <laughs> as fast as he can. Yeah. 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 God, Romy, you're, fucking, you're fucking awful right now, man. You <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? You don't like Yokozuna? <laughs> you're just you're trying to relate to the viewers the, a very descriptive uh, description. <laughs> mean. They'll mean see. They'll see in the pictures. <laughs> mean person. This was teased for the last couple of weeks, ever since Royal Rumble, so it makes sense. Uh, it's it's good to get this out the way. So you know we have a ready-made feud for Vader when he makes his return. This next segment is all you said. So next is our n- latest mankind vignette. It seems 
that things are starting to change around here. You know, a little out of control. Maybe I finally found a home. A hardcore home. Now I can have nice days. <laughs> it's so short, but it's so sweet. It's very nice. That's what she said. Oh, man. <laughs> Hakushi versus the 1-2-3 kid. This was great. Yes. Can I just say this? That match was, this match was it, fucking dope. This was the best match on either show. Kid's got the baby bottle he wants to shove down the throat of Razor in less than two weeks' time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, King no, Lawler no, has some inside <laughs> information for us. Listen to this. He found out that Razor was such an ugly baby that for the first six months, his mother diapered at the wrong end. Wow, oh that's it. God. That's some top-notch reporting. This match goes seven minutes, 23 seconds. Kid wins with a double underhook suplex off the top rope. This match was fun, very athletic, and surprisingly competitive, letting Hakushi hang with the one, two, three kid. This, this match would have not been uh, out of place on a Raw of today. Oh, yeah. Like, like Kid did a, a senton plancha, plancha onto, yeah. onto Hakushi. Hakushi catches Kid with the mid air uh, drop kick when he comes off the top rope. Hakushi hits a springboard press to the floor, and then that avalanche butterfly suplex for the pin. This was great. And Vince saw that as a battle of two martial artists. Yes, everybody wants to be fighting. And then one, two, three kid with his. Oh, he did that a lot. That was his little move right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Clarence Mason and Jim Cornette. Right. Clarence has not heard from the WWF. He's ready to take this to the Supreme Court if you ask him. He's going to sue if Vader isn't reinstated soon. Sue immediately. Gorilla Monsoon, Uncle Gino. Uncle Gino. From Uncle his home Gino. and a neck brace. He's got a few serious injuries. He's got a hairline fracture and some other very fancy medical jargon that I'm not going to repeat. Yeah, torn he, aspirilogous cartilage. Oh, what? Some <laughs> shit. <laughs> he has a torn religion? What? Torn aspirilogous cartilage. <laughs> he's re- he's re- religious? What? He's, he's found God during his injuries. <laughs> That's why he's refusing to apologize to Vader. He's already apologized, <laughs> apologized to God, so he just needs to apologize to Vader. Yes. Gorilla does apologize to the fans for his actions acting as interim president, uh, acting as Gorilla Monsoon instead of interim president. president. Thanks to fans for all their get well cards that he received. If he's still interim president, does that make Roddy Roddy Piper interim, interim president? <laughs> Vince had the audacity. To ask for an apology to Mr. Vader. <laughs> Gorilla was like, highly unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> he handled that well. He handled that. Very professional. He, he says Vader's reinstatement is up to the board of directors. And when asked about hiring Roddy Piper, he says, desperate times, desperate measures. Undertaker makes his entrance. We learned the 1996 Slammy Awards are coming WrestleMania weekend. Vote now. And it'll be Taker versus Goldust in two weeks' time because next week, Raw will not be on the air. It is. Is that because of Millionaire Ted? Asked Jerry. No, no. no. <laughs> it's, Vince says it's because of here. it's because of another dog show of sorts, <laughs> the Westminster Dog Show. I used to hate that shit. Oh, oh I used to hate them with the passion in the nineties. I'd rather watch fucking wrestling on fucking dogs. Fuck these mutts. Thank God, for, <laughs> thank God for Nitro, because you at least could watch one wrestling show when the Westminster Dog Show came through. That shit, thank God I don't do that shit now. Jesus. Then it's uh, Bret Hart making his entrance. This is for the WWF Championship. Bret still with the black eye three weeks later, because this is taped all taped from the same damn night. <laughs> Longest fucking black eye I've ever seen, man. <laughs> Jeez. Taker must have really knocked the shit out of him at the Rumble. Lawler says Piper has come up with an idea for a triple threat match. What's that? Diesel comes out to observe closer. He grabs a headset to go on commentary. Diesel says he heard he could get a pay increase if he did some commentary. Vince no salts that line. (laughs) (laughs) Well done, Vince. Well done. Taker lifts Brett onto his shoulders. Ref bump. Brett's legs graze referee Tim White's who just deliberately walked into them. <laughs> White saw there like a truck hit him. Brett works Taker's leg on the ring post, but Diesel attacks Brett from behind, throwing him into the ring post. Taker then takes it 
to Diesel on the outside. Diesel with a chair to Taker's back, tosses him back into the ring. Jackknife, a second jackknife as fans finally boo Diesel. <laughs> we go to a commercial break. Well, he, we gave him a second, he gave him the second jackknife because Undertaker sat up. He's trying, to, trying to sat up, yeah. He tried to get up. He just grabbed him. Oh. It's like, very, ah. ve- so. very Brian Pillman of him. <laughs> <laughs> when we return, McMahon inform- informs us that Brett went after Diesel during the break and Undertaker followed. This match is a draw and thrown out in 11 what minutes. What a fucking way to end that. That was terrible. Can and you say then, the words? Can you say the two words? Which tragic, fucking stupid, dumb as fuck? Which one? Dirty finish. <laughs> dirty finish. <laughs> yes, that, that's 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 the ultimate dirty finish. You mean to tell me if you're watching this, younger younger versions of us, kids? Younger virgins? Versions. Uh, hey, virgins. we were younger virgins. I, I didn't get we were virgins. <laughs> Four years old, four, five, six years old. I mean, what? I was. Uh, it's 1996. I was uh, seven no. years old. Oh my I, god, we're not gonna buy it. I was seven years old. No, I was seven. I'm not. I'm not selling you're anything. I was seven boy, years old. You. I was you're definitely a virgin. <laughs> like he is gonna, you're, gonna come in the room. What are you talking about in there? <laughs> you're fucking at seven. What's going on? <laughs> But you're watching this, and you wait for – you're thinking when you come back from commercial, the match is going to continue. <laughs> they tell you what happened during the break, and it's over. Like, what? I was so dumb, yo. So fucking dumb. And despite legal action being threatened, here's the latest Billionaire Ted skits. I'm so over this shit now. I am, too. And the fact they have it ending, ending your show is dumb as fuck. Yo, this is like the, the, After the that second – this is the second yeah, right? or third week they've done this shit, dude. We they close the show with this shit. It's like you really want people to to leave off with this. Yeah, you're that petty. Ed has wasted his stockholders' money, but he's having fun. And will exhibit the same behavior when Time Warner merger goes through. He says he's entitled to his plaything. Money and power motivate him. <laughs> uh, when he sees his daddy again, he's gonna tell him to kiss his ass. The journalists are in shock. And then there's a close-up on the gap in his teeth. Awful. (laughs) Vince has a voiceover of an ad in a newspaper that was rejected by the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. But he says it will be in the New York Times financial section. And the ad is just, what what was the ad? It was like making fun of uh, Ted Turner's fucking with your stockholders money. It's like, it's attacking the stockholders. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I just wrote billionaire Ted segment. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry, right, I got, got for you. I've got two notes on this from the Wrestling Observer. Uh, this was apparently done to publicly explo- ex- expose the millions of dollars and losses WCW has suffered in recent years, as well as making drug allegations. W- WWF filed a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission alleging predatory business practices by WCW. The overall idea is to paint a very negative image of WCW's financial situation and its business practices. As the possible... fucking audacity was a person, man. Wow. <laughs> the fucking audacity was a person to be World Wrestling Federation. Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Oh, my God. The hope is that they can cause Turner and Time Warner enough trouble that they drop WCW before the merger... Just to get rid of the headache, which would basically kill the promotion, WCW is a small spoke on the wheel of the Turner Empire, and losing it wouldn't hurt Turner at all, but it would destroy WCW. Kind of a brilliant plan, actually. What? (laughs) Of course Dave says that. (laughs) As for the planned Huckster vs. Nacho Man match at WrestleMania coming up, Eric Bischoff has decided not to pursue legal action to stop it. Believing he would be playing into McMahon's hands if he tried, since the whole premise of this is that WCW is the big bad bully trying to legally threaten WWF. Yeah, like like WWF is ruining their own product with this shit. Like literally, they came into the opening minutes of this show up because it was it, it was gonna be pretty tough to outdo that clusterfuck that was on uh, TNT. <laughs> and they 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 literally went the whole show like they, the whole show they were on top and in the final 10 minutes they really tried to give up this win they really did match of the night i think we all agree hakushi versus kid 
Absolutely. Ooh, match of, match of the close. night on, on either show. <laughs> MVP. Who you guys MVP, SP3? Uh, my MVP? I got uh, Diesel. Diesel Diesel won the opening matchup. He laid out Bret Hart. He laid out The Undertaker. Yeah, I got Diesel. And he did commentary. So. He did commentary as well. He got a check. Hardworking man. Trunk guy, you agree? Yeah, Diesel. Big day. Yeah, cool. I wrote down Diesel hoping maybe one of you could sway me with someone else, but I guess Diesel got to fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> LVP, I'm going to go with Vince McMahon for that last segment. Yeah, I mean, I, I should put Vince McMahon, but I'm going to keep like going in on Billionaire Ted. I just want this character to go away. <laughs> I just want this character to go away so bad. So another LVP for Billionaire Ted. <laughs> Drunk guy? Uh, Vince McMahon. Because of the uh, the verbally raping uh, comments during the promo. Oh, oh, and... you were offended? Oh, oh no, it was just the shit he was saying. Like, he, he was selling that like he was selling that like fucking Yokozuna was dying. No pun intended. No pun intended. And uh, I'm kind of over bearing that Ted shit. We're gonna put our thumbs out. We're gonna count it down. In three, two, one. It'll be thumbs up or thumbs down for this edition of Monday Night Raw. Three, two, one. Thumbs in the middle. Thumbs in the middle. And thumbs up. That's crazy. That final 10 minutes, man. It was a thumbs up show until the finish of that main event and the Billionaire Ted segment. That it's a strong, a strong, it's a, I'll give it a strong thumbs in the middle. Very strong thumbs in the middle. Goddamn, another bad Taker and Brett match. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Two dirty finishes, one rough bump, one baby face turn. Start counting those. <laughs> and you know what? You know what else I'm going to start counting? How many times? How many times the character Diesel or Kevin Nash mentions money? Oh, and he's man, already me mentioned it twice, <laughs> and tonight was the third time, three times he's mentioned money. How many times he's turned heel? <laughs> 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 he turned heel at Survivor Series. He turned heel at Royal Rumble. He turned heel tonight. Right. Like, this is the third time. Third time he's turned heel. I was also keeping track of how many how many times the uh, the Raw band would last. Only two weeks, not this week. Let's guess the ratings. Raw last week did a 2.4. Nitro last week did a 2.8. What do you think Raw and Nitro did this week? We'll start with Raw. Raw had the Brett Taker rematch and the two dudes with attitude tag team. Going with a 2.7. 2.5. 2. 2.7, right on the money. Nitro. They had the tag team titles, Sting Luger, Road Warriors. They had Macho Man Benoit. Last week, they did a 2.8. Going with a 3.0. Damn. Damn. Remember that? (laughs) (laughs) 2.6. Sits closer, 2.9. I think it's about a bitch. I told you. (laughs) time, they have an awful show. It's usually one of the most watched. Remember, remember Sting is a draw. They love Sting. They love the Stinger. He did main event, so yeah. Even in 2020, he still gets he still a draw. <laughs> so Nitro's up in the ratings, 10 to 9 to 2. And on the true rewind scoreboard, Raw wins this week with the two thumbs in the middle and the thumbs up. Uh, so Raw has won three in a row. Don't call it a comeback. It's 14 to 7 Nitro. <laughs> it's coming back strong. So let us know what you guys thought about the February 5th, 1996 episodes of WCW Nitro and WWF Raw in the comments section below. Give this video the thumbs up and share a little bit of nostalgia with your wrestling fans and friends by sharing this video. Of course, there is also the i card down at the bottom to push that subscribe and the bell below that to press all for all notifications right here on True Hill Heat. And a friendly reminder, we just hit over 900 subscribers on our True Hill Heat YouTube yes, channel. So help us along. We got a couple of weeks left in 2020. We want to hit that 1K mark by the end of the year. So share with another friend to subscribe and help us along on our 1K march and get some free merch in the process. Look at our 1K giveaway video where we explain more. So for the Supreme Ivan News, Drunk Guy JJ. You already know, Hexel underscore J underscore Duggan, Instagram, Twitter, Drunken Master JJ, Facebook, Jaquan James, follow the gang on Facebook, True Hill Heat, Instagram, True Hill Heat, OnlyFans, X Videos, Pornhub, 
since we are in 96, you can also follow us on AOL chat. True Hill, <laughs> Hill underscore Fluffy Love 92 oh, on our AOL fluffy, chat. Fluffy Love. And uh, yeah, man. Be everywhere. All day, every day. For the condescender of all reporting, Mr. Romeo Anthony Colon. The Pride of NY on Twitter and Instagram. Check us out, the Wednesday Night Warriors, me and Chris G. We go over NXT versus AEW, the Wednesday Night War. That's why we're called the Wednesday Night Warriors. Get it? Get it. Got it. Good. You can see me every single Saturday on this channel with the True Hill Heat podcast with Miss Chrissy Love and Top Guy JJ. You can watch me in live on the Wrestle 2 YouTube channel with Alex McCarthy on Wrestling Daily. And you can read some material on Sports Kita as well as our men's lifestyle podcast, True Rewind. And it's True Heel underscore Epic SP3 on True Insta- Toxicity. <laughs> <laughs> you can True watch our men- men's lifestyle. <laughs> when do we do that next week? Yeah, <laughs> fuck Super Bowl. You can, watch our men- you can listen <laughs> to. <laughs> you can listen to our men's lifestyle podcast, True Toxicity. <laughs> so, for. These two gentlemen, we are signing off for True Rewind, episode 33. Next episode, episode 34 on Super Brawl 6. Comment down below, like, share, and subscribe. And we are signing off until next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.